Welcome everybody. Today we're going to have a look at how to build this minimalist, clean and abstract design. The harmoniously curved lines form a fabric-like texture that evokes a sense of calm and freedom. We're going to use Cavalry, Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo to do this. Let us begin. So the first thing we're going to do is create our line structure, as we can see here. It's a bunch of lines, which are deformed by an oscillator and some staggering effects. Let's get right into it. Go to a new composition in Cavalry, delete what we already have here, and we can create a new line. And now we can duplicate this line, change it to linear mode, change it to vertical, and then start adding lines until you find that the density of the line count is appropriate. We can make this a bit bigger, so we'll need to create a bit more lines in order to be in order for it to be a bit more dense. Once we are happy with how this duplicator looks, uh, depending on that how much depending on how dense you want uh, this to look, we can start deforming the lines. So we can go to the basic line here and we can add a deformer. Search for oscillator here, and then start. Uh, right now, it doesn't look like it's much is going on, and that is because we are we need to make sure uh, the use normals is triggered, is enabled. As we can see, this immediately creates a very nice effect. One of the coolest uh, parameters in here is a staggered one, which, as you can see, staggers the offset of the lines. Uh, which makes them look like uh, they are shifting out of phase uh, with respect to each other. These are already looking very, very nice. We can go a bit further and stagger these effects already, but we'll see how that works out in a bit. As you can see, uh, our original composition has like the straight lines and in the middle it's only where it's affected. And you probably know where I'm going with this already. Uh, you need to use a fall off. So on the oscillator, we create a fall off. And yeah, you can very much see how this is looking very much like our scene. So we now need to tweak some parameters in order for it to feel a bit more complex, right? For example, we can bump up the number of lines, which creates like a fabric texture, kinda. We can also tweak the line's stroke width uh, in order for it to not feel so overwhelming, right? So if we lower it down a bit, you see it's a slicker version of it and it's look, it looks a bit more relaxed. We can also, within the fall off, change the strength in order to get a more dramatic effect. And we can also make the overall fall off a bit bigger. So we can create a bigger surface area for the effect. One of the coolest things is to mess up with the staggering effect itself. As you can see, the staggering effect is only being applied within the fall off. And these diagonal lines appear because the shifting is very proportional to each other, but we can mess with this a bit. So if we add a stagger effect to the stagger, it will stagger it even more, but in different steps, you can see here that it makes it now the lines are not completely straight, uh, they are curved. Of course, these lines are just imaginary. We're just pattern matching these lines kind of with our pattern matching brains. But now these are a bit more uh, curved and a bit more harmonious, in my opinion. And I like this effect a lot. We can change these parameters in order to create super cool effects. As you can see here, this rippling effect, which is looking very good. And don't forget, if you hit play, these moves which is very cool. Uh, so we can start tweaking those however you like it. Uh, it's really up to you to get crazy with this or to not, or to make it a bit subtle. Of course, play around and just whatever you feel it's right, it's what's right. Don't forget about that. So once we're done, you already know where we're going, right? We're going to copy this as SVG, and we can bring it to Affinity Designer, paste it, group it, 
And well, you have a lovely shape that we can mess around with within the program. Again, remember, you have all the options available. This is a stroke and a curve. These are curves uh, as understood by Affinity. These are just curves. Uh, as you can see, all the points in there, which is very nice. Um, but that means that we can tweak the stroke. We can tweak the color. And we can make it darker, lighter, bluer, pinkier, whatever you want. And I also want to walk you through my composition progress for this one because it's a bit different, as you might have guessed. So this was my thought process. I like to copy and paste all the artboards as I go and as I have a new idea or as I find it interesting enough to be kept. Uh, essentially, whenever I am happy with an idea, for example, let's just like play with this around, create the text make it bigger or whatever. And whenever I'm happy with some design or some version of it, I just go ahead and copy this. That is command drag, hold command and drag the artboard. And that is like a new version and I can always reference back what I had before. So I don't lose track and I always like have a very clear mindset of what I'm doing. And I'm very, and a very clear goal of where I'm going or I'd rather where I want to go. And this helps me a lot when referencing back things that I found interesting or I converted this text into curves, for example, and now this text cannot be edited because now it's just curves. Let's say I mess up, right? Like I do this and, and then I cannot go back. Like I already did a lot of steps. I cannot go like undo that much then, right, I just delete that and copy the text back into it and continue. So this allows my process to be a bit more flexible, a bit more agile. And also, again, having very near what you had before, it's a really very important for to keep going forwards. It allows you to know where you are going by knowing where you're coming from. And that is very, very important in this process. So by keeping that in mind, let's continue. And we can see here the process. I mostly tried to make it like a newsletter or rather, yeah, like a newsletter kind of vibe with the big letters uh, rotated. And the, essentially the, the final composition goes th through here. But mainly I wanted to keep it as different as possible from my usual stuff, which is usually what I do is I put some text, big text in here and some kind of circular form up there as with the last tutorial that we just did with the enigma and the orbs orbiting uh, over the, the text, right? So while that I like that look very much because it's very simple, I wanted to go f as far as possible from that. So I tried different uh, versions of this and I eventually converged into something like that which made uh, the text a bit bigger. So while that is not like a technical ability that we have to learn in cavalry or in affinity I believe it's extremely important uh, anyways because we need to have like a good composition mindset and a good composition exercise right play around move shapes around try and if you don't like it just don't erase it just copy another artboard or copy the last version and that i think will help you compose a lot more because you feel like you're not losing anything it, it is not expensive to just iterate on on something right for example uh if i don't like this at all like i, I could just keep it there and just create a no uh, another one like that. And for example, let's say I changed something and I made this like a bit bigger that covers the whole thing. And I'm like, wow, this is very, very nice. This very interesting, right? What I usually do is from here, I copy it downwards instead of uh, to the right. And that is an indication to me that I like this enough in order to keep on digging on it. So for example, let us say that we can, we'll like this a bit bolder and we can make it just a bit bolder and and adjust the text or whatever. And then uh, there, let's change the color here or make it a bit mm, thicker stroke. Those kind of details that are not like in composition, they are not exactly different. In basically they're the same. It's just tiny details that we're moving 
or that we're tweaking in order to move this composition forwards, but not as big as of a composition change, right? And then we're, when we are happy with those, then we can continue iterating and iterating. So that's my two cents on composition. Let's, let us now shift it to how we create um, this lovely effect, text effect that we are seeing here. So to create the text effect, we're going to use Cavalry. As we can see, we have already a text setup with our font and with our uh, with everything set up already. So you probably already see where I'm going with this. Again, more duplicators. I believe duplicators are so powerful in Cavalry, not only because they allow us to create powerful repetition patterns, but because we as humans, or at least I find when I see a lot of things moving harmoniously or relating to each other harmoniously, I believe it's very, very cool. Like It's always incredibly interesting. And that is, I think, one of the best workflows that this setup that I'm, te I'm teaching you here, that is Cavalry plus Affinity Designer or whatever vector editor that you use, Figma, Illustrator, it doesn't really matter. That is one of the best features that this brings to the table. The ability to create patterns and to create vector graphics that are immediately usable and that are immediately interesting with simple or fairly simple techniques, but very complex behaviors. So yeah, let's just duplicate the text and make it, for example, fit in there. We're also change it to linear just as before, and we're going to make it to vertical just as before. It's just the same stuff as with the lines, but with the text. But there's a catch. Uh, so the effect we're seeing here, it's very much like it's vanishing into the void. And that is created by staggering the opacity. So we can go here, uh, add a behavior, add a stagger, and immediately you can see the effect. So here the values matter a bit more because we're talking about opacity and not like position or strength or something like that, which can be a bit more amb ambiguous or vague. Uh, in meaning. Here we're talking about opacity and opacity goes from 0 to 1 or in this case to 100%. So the maximum needs to be 100 and the minimum needs to be 0 or more uh, but less to 100. You can see the effect appearing and it's important to flip this in order for the letters to be to look like they are shifting from the bottom to the top or rather from the right to the left if we rotated this. Uh, 90 degrees, that is uh, like this. Uh, well, if it, we rotate it, uh, we have to also make it in the direction horizontal uh, and the stagger opacity would need to change again. But that doesn't really matter if you had it like before. If we command Z our way back, it, ra it really doesn't matter because we can just copy this as SVG, go here, go to where composition, create a new one, for example, and paste it, group it, remember, and just put it in there. And it already, it's looking very, very nice, very, very interesting. And it gives off this ghostly effect or as if the text is coming like a very high speed to you. It's, it's always interesting to look at a lot of objects um, moving harmoniously, as I told before. In order to make this effect a bit more dramatic, what we can do is create a lot more copies, like a hundred copies, and makes and it makes it like a bit more seamless. It it feels more like a fading rather than a lot of copies. And uh, we can tweak these curves in order to make it appear a bit more or less fady. And I believe that's cool. That feels good to me. So we can now again copy all this. Oops, erase this, paste this, group, remember, and we have our lovely text. So once we're happy with the results of the composition, we can spice this up with a bit of post-processing, right? So there's nothing fancy here. We're just using our lovely uh, rectangle, completely gray, uh, at full noise capacity. And we're putting the overlay mode on top of that. And well, as you can see, if we enable the pixel view, it creates such a nice organic effect on the on the letters. And now the final touch that I added here involves 
affinity photo, which you may have if you already have designer. We're making use of this overlaid color scheme that we're, we're seeing here. And how we did it is we need to go to affinity photo, which is just editing photo and adding this effect. Once you add it in there, you can also tweak it in here. So it's like not as inconvenient, but mind that you need affinity photo in order for this to work. So what this effect is all about is a procedural texture uh, that we're gonna use. And particularly I used the oils preset, which looks like this, not very exciting, <laughs> but it definitely creates a very nice texture that we can tweak. And now one of the most important things is tweaking the blending mode, of course, as always, opacity a bit, and the channel mixing is always incredibly interesting. We're gonna talk about that. So first, in order to see anything, I just usually change the, the blending mode and usually overlay always wins. So let's just do that. Now with this setup, let's tweak parameters in here and see how they affect. You can very much see that if we zoom in a bit, uh, the clouds or the oil is moving under it. Um, and we can also up the brightness in here so it's a bit of a more dramatic effect. And one of the most important aspects of this effect was changing these parameters in here. If we changed how, what channels are being affected, so in this case we're only affecting the red channel, and this already looks so gorgeous with these shades of uh, teal that fade into a very dark purple, is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you can also do it with your green and makes for a also very, very nice effect. And turbulence may be a bit much, so if we make it uh, a bit less turbulent, that is, the texture now is a bit more stable, as you can see here. We can actually keep it so we can see what we're, how it's affecting it. Look at that, beautiful. And we can also make the square count bigger or smaller for this effect to be also bigger and smaller. And let me show you what that actually means. So if I make this number smaller, it feels like we're zooming on a smaller portion of this whole texture. So whatever was there looks a bit bigger, uh, if that makes any sense. That is how these textures work. This is just basic noise that it's uh, been, some, uh, we're applying some effects to it. So I like to keep my square count rather low in order to have like a big picture or rather a very zoomed in picture of the noise, uh, which makes it a bit, a bit subtle because it's like more gradient instead of like being, for example, very, very much like this, right? Which is a, a farther picture. So like 10, I think it looked good enough. Uh, let's switch this to our overlay and yeah whatever you feel uh, it's good, it will be good. I feel like the red one made it a bit, uh, felt a bit nostalgic even, it's so good. And then we, because the effects, it's a bit dramatic still for my taste, let us bump down the brightness so the brightest parts are not as bright. And then also mess with the opacity a bit so it's just a bit more subtle. So that is it for today. I think we achieved a very interesting, even if rather s simple and rather minimalist, I think it's powerful and I think it's very interesting to see all these shapes uh, come together in a very nice way. So thank you so much for watching and hope to see you very soon.